Welcome to another episode of Hardware Lens. Today's video will be part one of a three-part video series benchmarking what I call the world's most CPU intensive game, Prepared Flight Simulator. In today's video we will be determining the performance impact that hyperthreading and affinity mask settings have on Prepared Flight Simulator. There is no other application that I've ever run that will simultaneously max out all 20 threads on my 10900K while loading my 1080Ti to 98% GPU load like Prepared Flight Simulator does. I've always been a huge aviation fanatic and an avid user of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In fact, it's my love of Flight Simulator that introduced me into PC hardware and overclocking 20 years ago. Always having to squeeze the most out of my hardware to run this demanding piece of software. Lockheed Martin's Prepared is the continuation of the long-abandoned Microsoft Flight Simulator X, not to be confused with the much-hyped upcoming Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Prepared has been in constant development for many years now, with version 5 being the latest release. With a slew of popular high-detail anons installed, Prepared is the most demanding application that I've ever run on my PC. In fact, it's the only thing that can get my CPU and VRM as hot as Prime 95. Unfortunately, just about every mainstream PC hardware reviewer out there does not include performance benchmarks for flight simulators. They can be very difficult to test accurately because of the need for a standard test. In our case, we ran our series of tests using the popular PMDG 737 NGXU at Taxi 2 Gate Seattle Tacoma Airport with Orbex True Earth Washington installed. In addition, we are running custom shader mods with post-processing effects. All tests were conducted with the autopilot engaged flying a specific route with the same weather, date, and time. This provides a standardized benchmark in one of the most CPU intensive scenarios that the sim can dish out. I found to be the best performing on my system. In addition, I am running the fiber frame time fraction tweak with a value of 0.15. Note that the frame rate is locked at 45, as this is what gives me the smoothest results on my setup while running a VR headset. These settings also ensure that we are CPU limited for this test. For this test, we are using the Intel i9-10900K and the Intel i5-10600K both overclocked at 5.2 GHz with a 47x uncore ratio. The motherboard used for this test is the Gigabyte Z490 EORUS Ultra, and we're running 32 GB of Patriot Viper Steel DDR4 4000 C18 RAM. And in this test series, we wanted to see how much effect the CPU frequency, hyperthreading, the number of cores, and DRAM frequency had on performance. While some of the differences in this test may seem insignificant, remember that the frame rate is locked at 45, and flight simulators typically run at much lower FPS than most games. Due to the fact that every test was limited to a maximum of 45 FPS, even a 1 FPS difference in the average should be considered significant. Remember, it's an overall average. And I can tell you from personal experience that there is a difference that you can feel between each of these tests especially if you're using head tracking such as track IR or VR headset. In this video we are looking at the affinity mask and hyper threading settings. Prepared and FSX before it have always been sensitive to affinity mask and hyper threading. With the older 4 core 8 thread CPUs it was common practice to disable hyper threading for better performance. As you can see the worst results were with hyper threading enabled on all cores or with hyperthreading enabled and thread zero turned off in prepared with the affinity mask tweak. Turning off hyperthreading gained us two more FPS on average, as well as increased the 1% low by five FPS. Remember, when you are only getting 20 to 30 FPS, a five FPS gain is quite significant. And the average represents the overall average from the entire test. Intel 10th Gen CPUs have a nifty feature that enables you to turn off hyperthreading for individual cores, so we tried turning it off for core 0. 
Interestingly, this gave us the best results with an average frame rate of 40.6 FPS and a minimum of 27.3 for the 1% low. This is a great feature to take advantage of if you have a 10th gen CPU. Its benefit to prepare it is clear in terms of FPS and it also has the advantage of enabling the other cores to utilize hyperthreading for scenery loading. That concludes the results portion of the test and if you're interested we're going to leave a uh, video loop of the benchmark that we ran running in the background so that you can see for yourself what the difference is between these settings in real time. If you found this video valuable, be sure to check out part two where we will dive deep into our CPU and RAM testing with prepared version 4.5. And if you're interested in flight simulators, be sure to check back with us as we take a deep dive into CPU, RAM, and GPU performance testing with the new Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 as well as prepared version 5 and X-Plane 11. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified for when we release new content conducting various benchmarks on flight simulators and other games.